Uh, the chair now recognizes uh, myself for five minutes. Administrator uh, Reagan, I, I, I want to let you know it, we've been all bouncing around. We've got several committees going on, but I've been following you and, and uh, watching and listening to your answers. And I want to tell you, you, uh, you do give thorough answers as people are talking to you, and I appreciate that. A lot of times we see people with binders and they're just sitting there flipping back and forth just to try to figure out what the answer is, that, uh, the canned answer. Um, but I wanna, I wanna go in two different areas real quick uh, because the EPA is uh, purchasing millions of dollars worth of advanced combat equipment. And I, and I heard a little bit about this earlier on a, on a slightly different question. Uh, and a lot of this includes night vision. And, and so why does the EPA need military equipment? Well, and, and I'll give the same answer I gave before. I need to really look into uh, this particular issue and the reasoning behind our enforcement arm making these purchases. I'd like to give an honest answer, so I'd love to get back to you on that. So you're not going to war against anyone, right? <laughs> Listen, there's no one to go to war against. I believe that our permitted and regulated uh, uh, constituency are partners. And we're trying to do these things together. Well, I, I, and I, I guess it, I just want you to know, how are Americans supposed to feel about an agency? You know, because a lot of us feel like that our rights are always trampled on. And, and especially when you're stocking up on weapons. So, uh, you know, I would love to have some sort of detailed answer into that, um, especially uh, if, if, if there is no war on the horizon for the EPA. Absolutely. Um, another area that I want to quickly go into, um, just as my background is trucking. Um, I've, I've been in the private sector for over 30 years, and this is my first term in Congress. So I've practically spent my entire life uh, in the trucking industry, building a trucking company with my wife. And uh, you have proposed a new rule that's going to impose more burdens on the commercial trucking industry. And so if you have your way, these new emission standards are going to make new trucks even more expensive. Now, they, I mean, our truck prices have gone up astronomically over the past decade. And a lot of times what you do to us um, has such an adverse effect because the new emission rules that we have out there, the sensors are shutting down trucks left and right. I'm sure you all see them up and down the interstate. And a lot of times it's over some sensor that we can't even get the sensor to replace. And it is causing a huge burden and making trucks even more expensive. And, and it's hurting trucking overall. Now, with 98% of the trucking companies out there, 10 trucks or less, 95% are three trucks or less. Do you understand the hardship, the economic hardship that these t types of regulations are putting on truckers, especially with small businesses? Well, listen, I appreciate, uh, you know, the trucking industry and, and moving commerce and keeping our economy going. And we have proposed a rule. I will say that I've met with the American Trucking Association and engine manufacturers since that proposal. We've received thousands of comments. So we're combing through that. I think the points that you're making uh, are pragmatic and rational, and we're listening to those. And so what we're trying to think through is whether or not uh, this proposed rule really addresses the full suite of technologies that are available, uh, have the appropriate information in terms of the cost associated, and then the time frames that we're looking at to make some of these transitions. All of that is up for discussion, and we're in that comment period right now. Well, I understand that, but w well, what do you say to truckers that are, that are just trying to compete? I mean, we got high fuel prices, high insurance. Uh, what do you say to them? Higher prices on everything. And, and they're, that, they're the people out there that are moving the products up and down the road. And, uh, and, and frankly, we feel like Washington bureaucracy, they just live in fantasy land. Well, I'll say uh, that we're listening. Uh, I'll say that we have made a proposal uh, based on estimates and technology and information. Um, you know, a crude way of saying it is we have done things academically, and now it's time to test those theories with actuality and implementation. And we've got people sitting at the table uh, from your industry and others that are saying, listen, your assumptions may be a little aggressive or off, or the technologies may not be available as quickly as you think. We're listening to that. We're taking that into consideration. Well, and I'll be honest with you, and I'll finish with this. In, in my career, I have seen where the trucking industry has made great strides and in, in even fuel economy. And then all of a sudden, the EPA will come out with some rule, and that rule will increase the amount of oil that we use in our trucks per truck and decrease the, the, fuel, the oil change intervals and decrease the fuel mileage that you get out of those, those trucks and decrease the life of the engine. 
And it seems like I don't know who the EPA talks to or listens to, but it's certainly not the trucking companies out there trying to make a living. So with that, I'll... I'll...